All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we are once again on my cardboard table. Uh, it's because I'm hiding the fact that my garage is a mess. Uh, it's terrible. Fishing stuff everywhere. Trying to enjoy my weekend just like I hope you are. Okay. Uh, anyway, real quick, uh, what this is that I have in front of me is what we call an outdoor thermostat. Uh, you should learn about it in the code book um, in your summer class, I, I hope, uh, provided everything goes well. But uh, it's an outdoor thermostat, and uh, I don't know, about a decade ago or so, we started using them um, because the code required us to have them on uh, residential and commercial units. Um, I believe the code, uh, you'd have to look up the Energy Conservation Code of North Carolina. Uh, it's in the residential section, uh, like section 403 or something but it talks about heat pumps that have electric um, or resistance heat as their auxiliary heat uh, and what it is this is an outdoor thermostat it uh, it's got a, do a little knob right here I mean this is a field installed device uh, field installed whenever you read or hear that that means that it doesn't come from the factory like that you're gonna have to add that to it uh, you can see here I've got a couple screw holes um, over here on the side, um, I've got a dial, okay, so uh, this outdoor thermostat is just like a thermostat, it's a temperature uh, actuated or temperature controlled switch, okay, so on this, on this dial I go anywhere from zero all the way to 50 degrees, okay, I have a a little probe a little sensor okay uh, just like that little yellow wire that y'all use to plug into the uh, into your meters uh, this is not a wire but uh, it does the same thing it's got the little bead right here at the end that senses the actual temperature so you could coil this up or uh, unwind it uh, roll it out I'd say uh, to put it somewhere you know where the Sun wouldn't directly uh, influence it but it would still be outside uh, on the back side here uh, this particular one, this came off of a Linux, but you can see here it's got some electrical uh, specifications for it. Oh, look at that. Made in Malaysia. That's been a while. Haven't seen that one. Um, but anyway, we've got several contacts here, okay? Uh, and a lot of them now, uh, this, this is an older one, like I said, it's got three contacts, okay? So you can think of it this way. There's a normally closed set of contacts. And then the other one is a normally open set of contacts, okay? A lot of the ones you'll see now just have two contacts and is either an open switch or a closed switch, okay? And, and basically the way it works is it opens and closes around the temperature that you set it, okay? And the idea about this is we want to give a heat pump enough of a chance uh, to warm the house before we turn on our electric heat uh, during our auxiliary phase okay so the thermostat inside has no idea about the thermostat outside uh, which is different than the defrost board I mean there's all these things working in here and, and hopefully y'all can keep it straight with the knowledge that you've learned but an outdoor thermostat uh, this is real simple the way it works uh, the thermostat is going to control your contactor, your fan, your heat strip relay or heat uh, contactor sequence or whatever you have, okay? But instead of the W circuit running straight from your indoor thermostat to your sequencer um, for auxiliary heat, what it will do, it will come out here and you'll wire it into the switch and then continue the W circuit back into the air handler okay so we're gonna have to have some extra wires here so for the the circuit that uh, deals with your auxiliary heat um, only auxiliary heat we're not talking emergency heat right here okay uh, but with with the introduction of this uh, outdoor thermostat what a technician has to do is think about the wiring we have to wire our heat strips uh, or our heat sequencer contactor or whatever you have uh, we have to wire it in such a way that emergency heat always works because an emergency is an emergency we don't need to worry about what temperature is it outside uh, emergency heat uh, as you should remember is hey the compressor is not able to pump the refrigerant we have our backup heat as now our primary heat. So in the case of a heat pump with auxiliary heat that's electric, uh, when you wire in emergency heat, that E terminal on your thermostat has to go directly from the thermostat to your, your contactor or your heat sequencer or your heat relay, whatever you want to call it, directly, all by itself. As far as auxiliary heat, okay, we're using heat strips with the heat pump. Okay, the auxiliary portion of that circuit, 
will have to go from the thermostat on the wall inside uh, to the outdoor thermostat. And if it's colder than what number you set this dial at, then the switch will close, okay, because we're sensing temperature. Then the switch will close and pass the W circuit back into uh, your air handler to turn on your heat strips, okay? So uh, that's the kind of difference, the thought process around it. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop this video here and I'm going to go uh, show you mine, okay? Because every heat pump that has electric heat um, should have these on them now, okay? If you put in a new unit for somebody, uh, the inspector's probably going to fail you on the inspection if you don't, if he doesn't see the uh, the uh, outdoor thermostat. Okay, this is a code requirement, but it's not in the regular mechanical code. It's in the energy conservation code. Uh, and like I said, uh, don't quote me, but I believe it's somewhere around section uh, chapter four, section four hundred three. So give me a second. I'll be right back, and I'll show you what mine looks like on my unit. All right, let's see if we can get mine going here. I've got uh, got my service panel right here. I'm going to take the cover off my service area for my heat pump. All right, we're going to lay that down. Uh, and if you look at it, okay, uh, we see some familiar components. We see a contactor up here. Uh, and bear, bear with me because my unit might come on. It's a little warm today. Um, got my contactor. I've got my capacitor. I've got my defrost board okay I've got my power coming in where they connected and wire nutted and right here is this little contraption okay uh, and if you look at it this is my outdoor thermostat you can see here they they screwed it into the to the wall of the cabinet okay um, and I've got a little dial okay uh, there's numbers stamped in 0 10 20 30 40 45 okay and if you look back here I've got two wires going to it one going in one going out okay so, um, same principle, a little bit smaller. Uh, there's actually a little disc in here uh, that looks to be the way they control it. You don't see a long kind of wire looking probe. Uh, some of them do that and they actually, they'll actually terminate down here. Uh, they'll, um, now the bad part is you've got a lot of sun and direct sun can influence the actual temperature reading. Okay, it feels like it's 100 degrees at the beach, but it's only 85, you know. So they try to hide it and get it outside, but away from direct sunlight, okay. So uh, this looks like a, just a little snap disc inside the cabinet itself, which does, you know, a, a fairly accurate job, okay. So it's set for 40 degrees. Now, what does that mean? That means that, uh, and let's look at the wire. It uh, looks like they didn't use the, the white wire itself. They used... A green wire coming from inside to a brown wire all right now uh, what I will assume is that the W circuit starts at the thermostat and it goes toward the air handler and then it wire nuts instead of going to another white wire in the air handler it wire nuts to the green wire and comes out here and if it's colder than 40 degrees then the switch will close and it will pass power back to the brown which will go back into the contactor that controls my heat strips uh, I'd have to confirm that but that's the theory I'll try to draw this out just to show y'all one time but um, whatever this outdoor thermostat is set at it has to be colder than that in order for this switch to pass power uh, back to your um, heating contactor, heating relay, heating sequence, or whatever you have, of course. Of course, it has to have power coming into it. There has to be an active call for auxiliary heat. Uh, and your thermostat will likely say auxiliary heat, you know, in, in the wintertime. But if you have an outdoor thermostat wired in series with your W circuit for auxiliary heat, just because your thermostat says that it wants the heat strips on doesn't mean that they are. That's what the thermostat wants. This is another thermostat, okay? So it may very well, just because your, your thermostat's sending out a signal, this guy may stop it. So anyway, that's it. Just a few seconds about the uh, outdoor thermostat. Uh, we'll talk about it on Wednesday.